Not too long ago, Loris Karius was considered to be one of the best young goalkeepers in the world, having comparisons with the great Oliver Kahn and even fellow countryman Manuel Neuer. He was one of the youngest goalkeepers to ever debut in the Bundesliga and solidified himself as a first choice keeper just a few months after his debut. And by the time he was only 23 years old, he was even voted the second best keeper in the entire league behind the one and only Manuel Neuer. Karius seemed like he was the future for Germany and would be next on the list for all-time great German goalkeepers. He was so good that Jurgen Klopp made him Liverpool's number one target to sign at the goalpost. Everything was going well for him, until that infamous Champions League final that left him quite figuratively and literally traumatized. So much so that he's basically fallen off the footballing world and was never to be seen from again. So what exactly happened to Loris Karius that caused his career to spiral down and basically end overnight? Let's take a deeper look. Loris Karius was destined to be a great goalkeeper. Since he was 5 years old, Karius was already playing football for organized clubs. Every other year or so, he'd only advanced through more elite programs until eventually, at the age of 8, he had joined a Bundesliga youth team. And at each club, he was always the first choice keeper. No doubt, one of the most elite German goalkeeping prospects of his age. By the time he was 15 years old, he was scouted by Germany's under-16 squad where he was immediately given the starting position for all of their international matches. But Germany wasn't the only one to notice him. After Club Scout watched him in a Germany under-16 match, Manchester City invited Karius and his family to England and offered to sign him onto their youth program, a path that not even Manuel Neuer was offered during his youth days. For context, German goalkeepers almost never get stolen away from rich clubs in England, but Man City saw the potential in Karius. Eventually, he would return back to his home country and former club Mainz and quickly make a name for himself once more in Germany, establishing himself as one of the club's main goalkeepers at 19 years old, one of the youngest goalkeepers to ever debut in the entire German league. In his first season as the club's starting keeper, he was able to keep 9 clean sheets and save 2 penalties, which quickly earned him respect as one of the league's best goalkeepers at only 21 years old. Well, in a league poll given to 235 Bundesliga players, they all unanimously agreed that Karius was indeed the second best keeper in Germany, behind only Manuel Neuer. And this was voted for by players themselves, not the media, nor by any fans. It just goes to show you the respect his peers, who were legitimate professional footballers, thought of Loris Karius and his ability and potential. And that's when Jurgen Klopp in Liverpool came knocking. And immediately during his debut in the 2016-17 season, he was already impressing fans, having multiple clean sheets throughout the Premier League and English Cup on his first few matches. Klopp would quickly make him the club's first choice goalkeeper. However, next season, things would start to go downhill. His confidence started to be a little in question. Against AS Roma in the Champions League semi-final, Karius let a shot go through his hands quite clumsily. He was a big guy after all. It really shouldn't have happened. But nobody thought much of it back then, since they won 5-2 at home. But during the second leg, Roma nearly made a comeback by beating Liverpool 4-2 in the second leg, with Liverpool narrowly winning 7-6 on aggregate. Karius definitely didn't look like the great keeper he was a few months ago. But hey, the club was going to their first ever Champions League final in over a decade. No one really cared. It was time to celebrate. Now came the Champions League final against Real Madrid. It would be an evening Loris Karius would never forget and not in a good way. To start the match, Karius was not looking as confident as he used to. Real Madrid kept the pressure early, nearly scoring a goal that hit the crossbar not so long ago. Then, in a moment of shock that would stun both Real Madrid and Liverpool supporters, Karius would make one of the biggest goalkeeping mistakes of all time, carelessly rolling the ball away with Karim Benzema right next to him, scoring the first goal of the match. 
And in the third goal, a long shot from Gareth Bale was scored too easily as he lightly stopped it before it would bounce into the goal. Something keepers always work on and something he's done thousands and thousands of times. But for some reason, this one particular save looked weak and defeated, causing what should have been an easy deflection to turn into a goal. One of the biggest goalkeeping blunders in the history of the Champions League final. After the match, Karius tearfully apologized to the fans, saying his mistakes lost the match for the squad as he broke down on the pitch. Media went non-stop, making fun of his performance and heavily criticizing him for giving away those easy goals. Not to mention, on social media, the fans were as toxic as ever. Surely, he was the joke of the footballing world all summer, as the worst goalkeeping performance seen in recent history. Karius even confirms that he received death threats, personal insults, and verbal abuse towards his family and loved ones for his mistakes he made that night. This would cause Karius to spiral into depression and anxiety, knowing he had one of the worst performances of any goalkeeper in such a big stage. And after all the pressure, anxiety, depression, and regret, he would never be the same goalkeeper again. That goes to show you just how important mental health is, not only for professional players, but for everyday people like you and me. When left alone with negative thoughts, emotions, and experiences in our heads, it can be a very deep hole that we might not be able to dig ourselves out of. And this is the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy service that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with a therapist so you can share your thoughts, feelings, and problems with a professional who will listen without having to go out in person or even seeing each other on camera if you don't want to. Just fill out a quick questionnaire to help you assess your specific needs and then get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. BetterHelp's network of over 20,000 professional therapists gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages securely with your therapist today. Mental health is important for everyone, and with BetterHelp, let your voice be heard by professionals who care. Join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist today, and get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Raymar, or click the link in the description to check it out now. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Ever since the Champions League final, Karius was completely thrown to the sidelines. Even his teammates and coaches, no matter how angry they were at his mistakes at the end of the day, felt bad for all the insults and verbal abuse he was getting. Liverpool's motto is, you'll never walk alone. But for Karius, he was left all by himself. So just what happened to Karius? It's almost like he forgot how to be a goalkeeper, then just fell off the face of the footballing world. There's two answers to that. For the first one, we have to look at the physical damage that happened to Karius during the match that would roller coaster into everything that went wrong for him that fateful night. Before he would make that seemingly careless mistake by rolling the ball directly in Benzema's way for an easy opening goal, we have to look at just a few moments before. Sergio Ramos would collide with Karius during an attempted cross and elbow him directly on the side of the head, causing him to fall down and roll in pain. People didn't think it was that big of a deal when it happened, but a few days after the match, during a medical checkup, doctors revealed to Karius that he actually suffered a concussion from the contact with Ramos. This would have significantly affected his performance during the match, which could easily explain how he made such a careless mistake in front of Benzema. The physical trauma almost certainly affected his peripheral vision and awareness of his surroundings. If you've ever hit your head hard enough, you'd know how it feels. But without a doubt, the more damaging thing was his physical and emotional trauma. Like I mentioned, throughout the Champions League run, Karius had already been making some big mistakes that were overlooked. But after that huge and unforgettable blunder he made that resulted in Madrid's first goal, Karius was mentally broken. Try to look at it from his perspective. You're playing the biggest annual sports match in the world and made one of the biggest mistakes anyone has ever made on the big stage. Players make mistakes throughout the game. Forwards miss easy chances, midfielders lose the ball all the time, and defenders can play terribly and let the attack come through. But no mistake will be remembered and judged harder than the mistake of a goalkeeper. You can be blocking 99% of shots on target, and your defense can still stand there and do nothing. But once you get scored on, the fans don't blame the defense, they blame you. 
That's how tough it is to play the position. Now, of course, it was Karius' mistakes, but the hate the fans, media, and internet showed to him for his blunder was unparalleled. You can truly see his emotion after the match and how much he felt. Here's something to put this into perspective. Back in the 2008 Champions League final between Manchester United and Chelsea, John Terry had the chance to win the game with just one more penalty make, but he would famously miss it, leading to Manchester United winning the title. A mistake that haunted him for so long, it would take him 18 months until he would take another penalty once more. Now imagine how Karius' mistakes must have haunted him, knowing that hundreds of millions of people just saw what could have been the worst goalkeeping performance in history. Karius was so traumatized, he basically forgot how to be a goalkeeper. His once promising career would seemingly end overnight. After the match against Real Madrid, nobody wanted Karius anymore. Liverpool would send him on loan to the only club that would dare to take him, all the way to the Turkish league to play for Biskitas, which was basically a mid which was basically a mid-level team at best. This was almost like a punishment for the man. While he had hoped to come back in form and redeem himself during his time on loan, the psychological damage was just too much for him. Even after two years with the club, he was average at best, still making simple mistakes and conceding a lot of easy goals for his club. He would then move on to another loan in Germany playing for Union Berlin, but was only good enough to make four appearances. Officially, he still belonged to Liverpool, but no other offers were ever made for Karius again. Liverpool had no plans to bring him back to the first team and silently let his contract expire to where he's unable to find a team till this very day. But it seems like four years later, Karius is finally on the road to personal recovery. He's then focused on transforming his body, gaining what looks like at least 20 extra pounds, looking as strong as ever. He stated that his mistakes still haunt him, but the best thing to do is try and move forward. Karius has been relentlessly training to get back in form and prove to clubs that he, even at 28 years old, can once again become a reliable goalkeeper that any club would love to have on their squad. I truly wish Karius the best and hope that his story can be a reminder to all of you. No matter what mistakes and hard times you've gone through in the past, you have to keep moving forward and focus on accepting it and improving yourself from that point on. It's okay to feel sad or depressed, but that doesn't mean you have to stay that way. Talk about it with someone, hit the gym, or keep working hard. As long as you keep moving forward, that's all that matters. But that's gonna do it for me today, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed. It really is the best way to help support this channel with the algorithm. And let me know what you think about Karius and his journey or any other video recommendations on the comments section below. Lastly, subscribe if you haven't already and hit those notification bells to watch more videos like this every week. Thank you to everyone who's made it to the end of this video. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one.